Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing another movie review this week. And I went to go see it on Sunday at the Landmark Theater in Westwood, California. Because they're actually showing it in selective theaters. Hopefully it gets a wide release someday, which I know it will. It's an independent film that's set in the 50s, and it's based on a book by Philip Woff called Ethnic Nation. It's a story about a young Jewish student who moves from Newark, New Jersey and attends at a small college known as Windeberg in Ohio till he meets a beautiful but very elegant girl named Olivia and suddenly confronts uh, the Dean over the role of religion of his academic life. It stars Logan Lerman, who's been best known for the roles of Percy Jackson, as well as uh, several other films uh, he's been in, like The Perks of Being a Wallflower, uh, Fury, Noah, and all the rest. Sarah Gadon, Tracy Letts, Pico Alexander, Danny Bernstein, Linda Amon, Ben Rosenfield, Philip Extinger, and Nora Robbins. It's written and directed by James Gamus, who's been best known for being the long screenwriter for Anne Lee films, such as Project Tiger and the Hidden Dragon. The movie begins set in 1951 at Newark, New Jersey, which was during the second year of the Korean War which actually killed a soldier. We meet a young Jewish student named Marcus Mesner, who is played by Logan Lerman, who describes his sophomore year at Winsburg College in Ohio, and he was attending it there, which he transfers from Robert Tree College in New York just to escape his father, who happens to be a butcher. Yeah, so he started working together with him, you know, making uh, kosher meat and all of that. But unfortunately, his father had consumed a lot of fear about his dangers of his adult life. He became infatuated by a fellow student who's very beautiful and elegant named Olivia Hutton, who's played by Sarah Gadon which apparently she has a secret life of her own. She actually attempts to commit suicide by actually cutting her arm. And Marcus decided to go on a date with her. They went to a, uh, a French restaurant where they had the uh, escargots, you know, those snails. And then suddenly they drove all the way to... Uh, a cemetery and this is where the, there was a sexual experience uh, between him and her and that's when she performed a blowjob on Marcus which is uh, known as Vitalio. Yeah, I don't want to explain that. We're gonna keep it that way. And that only happened on one and only date. So that also leads to bigger problems because, unfortunately, at, at his college, he actually had stayed in, the, in a dorm room with two roommates. Yeah, which apparently he wasn't getting along, mostly because he was trying to focus on his work. And they, they just keep bugging him and bugging him that he decided enough is enough. He just wants to move to another place of his own so he can have privacy. So he has to confront to uh, the dean of the college, Hals Codwell, who's played by Tracy Letts, in his office. So basically they were explaining about uh, that he wanted to change rooms and he wasn't getting along of the roommates that he had. And it was a long conversation between the two because this is where he was talking about you know religion and all of that. Actually making a quote from an essay called why I'm not a Christian. I mean, they also believe that he's actually an atheist, too. Which apparently he is. 
this is what happens because by the time uh, he was confronting him, yeah, I mean, he calls him Sir all the time. And I know um, <laughs> Caulfield wanted to um, just say his first name instead or just call him Dean or Mr. Caulfield, but whatever. That long conversation went way too far that suddenly he started feeling very ill. He threw up, he fainted, and wants up in the hospital only to get his appendix removed. So then he stayed in the hospital for weeks and hoping to get better till suddenly Olivia had to visit him you know, along with his roommate. Uh, well, first his roommate and then later Olivia. Just, uh, just to see if he's okay and and trying to explain what's going on here and while he was busy studying and all of this. Then his mother came and became very suspicious after hearing about the, his father you know, being upset and having trouble selling some more kosher meat uh, in the store so that causes every, all the customers to go to another supermarket. So yeah, he was having money troubles as it is. But anyway, his mother um, had suspected um, Olivia. Marcus' mother came to visit to see if, if he's okay too. And, but she actually had a suspicion that um, him with Olivia would definitely um, isn't um, isn't connecting very well. And, and the fact that since she does attempt suicide, mostly because she cut her wrist would be um would definitely wouldn't wouldn't do any good for him so they so she wanted uh, Marcus to end their relationship after all this had happened the dean actually find uh, Marcus guilty of hiring another student to attend the chapel in, in his place and it also serves him as a punishment which then later then suddenly he got drafted at the US army you know during the war, which is the Korean War, and and Olivia is basically had disappeared without a trace. So goodness knows what happened to her later. I would say this was an excellent drama. It does have some funny moments here and there, but it's also what it is. It's a powerful drama. It's based on the book by Philip Roth. And I would say Logan Lerman definitely brought in a, a fine performance of his career. Definitely his best performance since uh, Percy Jackson. And all the other films that he has done uh, over the years. Um, he definitely shows that he can definitely act. There's no doubt about it because that powerful scene alone was when he started to uh, act real nervous. You can tell by the tension that he was getting. I mean, he was really nervous. I mean, especially when he was uh, with Olivia during the restaurant and then later in the cemetery where that's where they had the, the sexual awakening. I like the moment when he was living inside the dorm and he was talking to his roommates and mostly because he was writing a letter on Olivia because, you know, they couldn't see each other for a while because of that situation and all that, well mostly because he was ignoring her at times and all this other stuff because he was explaining to her that he wants to see her again but he felt bad about this and um, one of the roommates actually uh, said is that the girl that blew you? <laughs> yeah because uh, Olivia actually gave uh, Marcus uh, a blowjob yeah. <laughs> well, it is an R-rated film, but there wasn't uh, much uh, offensive uh, sex in the movie at all. I mean, it, it's basically brief. I mean, it's pretty tame, but the, the whole film basically does have uh, some foul language. Like, he did say the word fuck at times. And... Um, an ass and all that and there was actually some violence in the movie but it was only just a few mostly from the 
the flashbacks of the Korean War, you know, when he was uh, a soldier uh, in the movie. And the scenes with him, with, uh, with Dean Codwell in the office was like, oh man, that, this was really something because it, this was like a huge long conversation between the two and that was the best part of the whole film is that he he really uh, stayed in in the office for like I think like for like an hour or so and yeah it even feels like it too because of how long it was you know he had he had to stand up trying to explain to him about this and all of that and yeah, even he forced him to sit down, but he couldn't, so, and then, until he got really sick. So I had to say, he was really good in this movie, and it shows. He can definitely, uh, pull this performance off. And by the way, he's also the executive producer for this movie, too. Yeah, from, um, studio, uh, Roadside Attractions and Summit Entertainment, which is owned by Lionsgate. So he, it, he took some time to actually, uh, get this movie made because uh, originally uh, they had Scott Rudin to actually produce this movie um, yeah because he bought the rights of Philip Roth's uh, novel which came out in, in 2008 but that never happened so if, I gotta say I gotta give him credit for that because this is his first time and speaking of Logan I actually met the guy and he was very nice. He was very nice to me and and my sister because even though you know she is a huge fan of him, <laughs> which is good because uh, she actually saw the movie twice. Um, I only saw it once uh, at the same theater. This was also the first time I ever been to this theater, but it was nice to see him. You know, we would just we only talked a little. I, I just you know just took a picture with him. Uh, just after I took a picture with a fan on his camera, and I was just explaining to him that I'm also a movie buff, a movie reviewer, and all of that, and, and so on and so forth. So it's cool. And then we later met him outside. You know, he was just about to leave, and we just said, you know, I I enjoy your film. Uh, it was great to see you. You're a great actor and a great guy. You know. Hope, hope to see your next film someday. So that's cool. It's a great guy. Um, also, um, other actors like Tracy Letts. Yeah, he's very good as Dean Cotwell. He definitely shows what he's doing. He's also very uh, humorous at times, especially when they were in the office. So. And uh, Sarah Godon as Olivia Hutton. Yeah, I swear to God, she she is very beautiful. Uh, she definitely. She, it definitely has that 50s uh, style feel to the film in, in that way, but I gotta say she really looks like like all the um, all the girls that you see uh, back in the 50s where they always look so uh, elegant, wealthy, and, and beautiful. Yeah. And I gotta admit she is pretty sexy too. <laughs> yeah. She was very good. Um, it's a great cast too. It definitely shows um, how this the story goes, and I really enjoyed it. So, hopefully, this movie gets a wide release someday. I, I know they're playing it in selective theaters. It just came out since July 29th of this year, so we had a hard time trying to f try to see this movie anywhere. But uh, Westwood. <laughs> But that's good because at least we got to see the Q&A that he had. At the, yes, because he was doing the, the Q&A after the film had finished. And he was explaining about uh, the movie. And and he was also talking about all the films that he was doing. And he's actually planning to do something in the future. But it's good. You know, I, I was there. Uh, along with my sister, everything was going great. Um, so, it was fun. But um, if you get a chance, though, check out Indignation. It's an excellent drama. If you love Logan Lerman, um, just give it a try. Hell, if you even love the book, same here. Definitely go see the movie. 
So anyway, I give indignation five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.